This is lab two, lines of charge, and it's a continuation of lab one, which was point charge. So in this lab, we're basically redoing lab one, where we're observing how charged objects interact with each other. However, instead of only looking at a point charge, which is a single point on the um, charged object, which in this case is a piece, uh, two pieces of tape, we are instead looking at a line of charge that's going throughout the entire object. Um, and by doing this, we are hoping to create a more accurate, uh, calculate a more accurate charge. So the fundamental concepts that are going to be used would be Coulomb's law, um, electric force, superposition, um, specifically the idea that with the line of charge, we're going to be having essentially uh, multiple points of charge all throughout the um, charge tape. Um, Newton's second law and Newton's third law. So for our lab setup, we are going to have one charge tape B. Um, it's going to be draped over two other objects that are neutral. And we are going to have it interacting with another charge tape. And we are going to be recording the distance between the two tapes and how long it takes um, for tape B to start to float since the two tapes are going to have the same charge. They're going to repel each other. Um, and then the assumptions that we're going to have going into this is that both tape A and B have the same charge and charge is equally distributed along the tape. So the data that we used um, in the beginning with like the point charges and everything is that we're going to have a tape length of 0.2, a tape mass of 0 0.0002 kilograms, and then the average float distance was 0 0.023, which was the average of three different trials. Um, our gravitational force that we know of is going to be negative uh, 0 0.001. 96 newtons, um, that's going to be the mass of the tape times it by its gravitational force or gravitational acceleration, my bad. And then don't, knowing that, we know that our electric force is going to have to equal the same thing and that they're going to cancel each other out. Um, and our previous charge of tape B, which we calculated in the last lab for the singular point charge, was 1.1 e to the negative 8 coulombs, which we used using um, Coulomb's law and isolating the Q charge. And now we are going to go and try to find a more accurate charge for tape B uh, using the glow script model. So in the glow script model, um, we know that the charge is going to be evenly distributed through the whole tape, basically by using several point charges. And using this, we're going to hope to get a more accurate measurement of charge, knowing that the ultimate, uh, knowing that the ultimate charge for the force electric is going to have to equal the force of gravity. And so on this slide, you can see our model with the red representing tape A, uh, tape B, and the purple representing tape A. Um, the yellow arrow represents the gravitational force, and the white arrow represents the electric force, whereas all of the green arrows represent the um, point charges of the electric force. Um, in this model, I basically did 20 point charges that were in the line, knowing that the uh, charge is equally distributed along the tape. And now going into this coding, we can see that our charge for the tape 
we determined to be 2.2341 times 10 to the negative 8. And basically, we did this by going over the entire code of uh, determining what the charge and of the electric force and the electric, uh, the gravitational force would be. And knowing that they were equal to each other, you could go back and type in different values to figure out what the um, most accurate charge would be.